Hey, what is up, heroes, and welcome back to more Pokemon Spork. Last episode, we got a Zero Aura for the team, which looks really awesome. The sprite for it looks amazing. Uh, we stopped some Deoxys who were trying to attack the space station. Turns out they just want the uh, the little meteors that changed their form, and we got Deoxys on our team as well. We then took a rocket ship to a disco planet, had a nice little space jam with Polkia and Sealus. We battled Sealus. He looks kind of strange, but we managed to uh, beat him. And the Guardian took all of us to the Data Vault. Sela said he'll take us to the Data Vault and the Guardian, you know, took us here. So we can go explore it and see what, see what the Data Vault's about. I'm actually quite excited. Let's quickly heal up. Okay, and let's go in. Oh, Litwick. The bottom left describes events that could have happened, but didn't. The bottom right has fun facts and info you never knew on people you've met. The top left is trivia that doesn't fit into any specific category. Top right contains info on how this universe works. And the room straight ahead... That's where the manager is. Oh, the manager? Okay, so let's look at events that could have happened. But didn't. We got a lot to do. Jim's gym originally had a lot more rooms. The living room and kitchen were going to be separate. And there would have also been a garage and bedrooms for his family. There would have been one trainer per room and players would have needed to defeat the trainer in each room to unlock the door to the next. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm guessing this room is maybe what would have happened for the developer to make the gym like that, maybe? Uh, characters that didn't make it into the game. Oh, okay, yeah. Original Dragon Tamer are the original CLS League leaders for every type except Dragon appear in Spork. Some of them are separate characters, some of the original ones are still active gym leaders, and the Elite Four were the first leaders of their types. I had trouble coming up with an original Dragon Leader character, although some details were planned. While Drago uses more gentle and elegant looking dragons, the original dragon leader would have used fierce looking dragons like Salamence and Hexorus. Okay. The original dragon leader would have been someone that Drago looked up to, and who passed the position on to Drago after resigning. I like Drago though. It can be assumed that the original dragon leader isn't in Sealess region during the time of the player's vacation. Update, I thought of more details for the original dragon leader when making the side game Delisa's Delicious Dreamland. Her name is... Ryoko? And she's Draga's aunt. At this point, it's too late to add her into the story, unfortunately. I would have had her come back to Sealess for Krillia's birthday party. Doing so now would mess with the variable associated with talking to people in the birthday party to progress the story, and possibly repeat an event. I consider it canon that she flew back for the party, even though it doesn't happen in the game. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, characters that make the game um, Lydian. Uh, Lydian is Isabella's grandmother. Like Isabel, uh, she has illusionist abilities and taught Isabel how to use them. Isabel's powers eventually surpass Lydian. Okay. She has all 18 gym badges, but never challenged the Elite Four. She collected the badges because they're pretty. She would have been battled at Victory Road. She didn't make it into the game because she wasn't much of a character by herself, and mainly existed to give more background info on Isabel. Okay. Despite not appearing, her existence and all details about her mentioned here are still canon. The player just doesn't meet her. Okay got Porygon. So, uh, Gladys? It's a humanoid robot that was a reference to GLaDOS from Portal. Oh, sweet. <laughs> uh, Gladys would have served as security for Team Portal, being as strong as an admin. Gladys didn't make it into the game for two reasons. The first is because Team Portal isn't based off the Portal games, so Gladys might give the impression that they are. Second is because she didn't add much to the story other than being a reference and a boss fight. Fair enough, and you got Unknown. So Dance Machine. The Dance Machine wouldn't, uh, would have been at the entrance to DJ Ultra Beats Gym. It was based off daydreams I've had about a Mr. Game & Watch like machine that fights enemies with dance. <laughs> dance off bro. Enemies would have to copy the Dance Machine's moves exactly or they'd get knocked back. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's go talk to Krillia. So there are two different routes I considered for Krillia. The one I went with was her trying to gain intel on Team Portal from the inside. The other route I considered was Krillia having her own motives and using Team Portal to reach them. The plan if I went that route was for Krillia to overthrow Pandora in later parts of the story. Oh, that could have been a cool twist. Pandora's goal would have been the same, but Krillia's goal would have been a lot simpler. She wanted to be friends with, Ho uh, with Hooper. I decided to go with her, being a spy for two reasons. The first is because I was worried going the other route could have taken away screen time and character development from Pandora. The second is because I found the spy route easier to add support and details to. This like little room about like what could have been is so awesome. It's just like nice to know like the developers, you know, thought process and you know things that that might have been in the game. It's, it's so sweet. 
Okay, so um, Varuma City concept changed a lot during development. Originally, it was going to be a resort city with multiple districts. The first district would have had Jim's Gym. <laughs> Jim's Gym is so weird to say Jim's Gym. While later district would have had Ashley's. Uh, the district Ashley's Gym was going to be in ended up as its own city. The resort concept was also scrapped and used for Innocent Island instead. This led to Varuma City uh, being just a small area, renamed to Varuma Town. During 1.6's uh, remapping phase, Kirby suggested making a second section of Varuma that would be accessed later in the game, asked the, you know, where the embors were blocking the bridge then. She also suggested adding a training gym to it. So Varuma once again had more than one section. Since Rainier is the frontier brain of the battle factory, I thought it would be good to make her the training gym leader. With so many Pokemon, she can help trainers out with almost any kind of challenge. I decided to incorporate the early concept of Cianosa being a district of Varuma into Spork's Law, which is detailed in a TV at Varuma's hotel. They wanted to expand Varuma and connect with Cianosa, but had to compromise with Verizium. Fair enough, you got Manaphy here. Okay, so it can be caught with Ivan's permission, but originally Manaphy was going to be obtained as an egg, which would be given by Tristan at the Underwater Hotel after becoming champion. Okay. Fume would have been obtained by Breed and Manaphy, as in the official games. This was changed to give more life and lore to the Sea Star Society. Makes sense. I was originally going to insert myself into the game. In game, Ice Cream Sandwich is the original Ice and Fairy leader of the Sealess League, but different original leaders of those types were planned. First fairy leader was going to be an Alolan princess named Crystal. Ooh, Alolan princess sounds cool. Part of the same family as Ace Roller. After coming to Sealess, uh, she was still referred to as a princess, though she would have had uh, wouldn't have had any political power in Sealess. Like Ice Cream Sandwich, she lived in Crystal Castle and would have been the one to approve trainers for Mega Revolution. The first leader was going to be a bulky hiker who lived in Norau Mountain. Hadn't decided on a name for him yet when plans were changed. He would use defensive and bulky ice types like Alolan Sandslash and Avalug. Uh, the sprites of me, based on an avatar I used to use, uh, were originally for a different game someone else was making. What is the name of the game in case it hasn't been released by the time Spork is finished? It was on a whim I decided to include myself in Spork. So I took Crystal's role and decided to be her replacement as the original fairy leader. Since details for the original ice leader weren't complete and I'm an ice cream sandwich, <laughs> I decided to take uh, his role too. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's awesome, man. Uh, before I came up with the Battle Mall, there were a few other ideas I had for the building at Premog and Softlands. One of them was Knights of the Round Table. Oh, that sounds awesome. Which would have been a group Barker started like the Gentleman's Club. Would have had trainers with names like Surprise and Surname. Another idea was an abandoned, abandoned factory that would have been Zekrom's post-game location. Lee kicking open the door and Barker being involved was always planned, but it took a while to settle on the building's purpose. Barker said that the idea for the battle mall came to him when eating dinner one day, which is pretty similar to how I came up with it Came up with it for the game. <laughs> That's sweet, man. Oh, man. So this was, um, what was to the right again? The right was fun facts you never knew on people you've met. Okay, fun facts. Oh. Whoa. Oh, wow, this is... It's a lot. All right. We won't talk to everyone, but I'm going to talk to some facts about people I want to know about. So, let's start with Litwick. So, this Litwick has been helping out the Data Vault for a long time. It was under the care of a trainer who was granted access to the Data Vault. That trainer was originally from Ultra Megalopolis, but after seeing how Solgaleo and Lunala could open wormholes, took to Dimension Hopping as a hobby. She had pale skin with a greyish tint, yellow eyes and purple hair. The same one from Ice Cream Sandwich's Dream. Sweet! Printed and caught the Chandelier, who was the mother to this very Litwick, and went along too for that reason. When seeing the Data Vault, Litwick was enthralled, it wanted to stay and learn, and this Litwick wasn't really interested in battling, and all parties agreed to let Litwick stay here. The trainer and Chandelier still visit Litwick regularly and go to places together. Litwick's greatest strength is its sense of direction. It isn't really afraid of anything in particular. Final fun fact, Litwick thinks scented candles are cool. <laughs> right, I want to know about Sealess. Originally a nomadic civilization, the Sea Stars decided to settle down and plant their roots in the waters under the Sea of Knowledge. They wanted Sealess to be the first official leader of their society, since he'd help out the uh, most with getting everything started. Before then, the Sea Stars didn't have a hierarchy. Meeting humans for the first time was a surprise for the Sea Stars, but they showed them as much hospitality as possible. Humans were just as surprised that the Sea Stars were Pokemon trainers too. Kayla tried one of their monthly tournaments and got to the finals. Where she tried with, she tied with Peach. Though Sealess is the region's first champion, 
and he celebrated very much because of that. His path there shouldn't be forgotten. Silas is not undefeated. He didn't beat the Elite Four in his first try. Like Kayla, his battle with Peach ended in a draw, which the league doesn't qualify as a victory. He did later manage to win and become the champion he's known as today. Silas's greatest strength is his leadership. His biggest fear is trusting someone who he shouldn't have trusted. Fun fact, Silas' favourite drink is fresh water. Okay. So let's look at Anne. Despite the incident with the Oxys, Anne was already a decent trainer before challenging the league. Anne formed a connection with Pluto, the Absol, because its fur matches Anne's hair. When it got especially cold during the winter in Norel, Anne would ride Pluto through the city, its fur providing warmth. After the Oxys incident, Anne went to Crystal Caverns and was approved for was approved from a revolution by ice cream sandwich. Since Pluto already possessed an Absolite when it met Anne, they had they had to work on mastering Pluto's mega form. When challenging the gyms, and went in order from which would be easiest to hardest based on type matchups. Saving the ones with the most advantages over Anne's team for last um, gave more time to learn better moves, gather more items, and prepare strategies. Anne's greatest strength is the perseverance to learn from mistakes and do better next time to reach goals. Anne's biggest fear is having to retreat from space again. Final fun fact, Anne started a snowball fighting tournament once in Norel and won. <laughs> right, let's go to the Guardian. So, Silas's Guardian is a mysterious figure and will remain so in some ways to those who view this file. As per the Guardian's request, it's known that the Guardian came to Silas before the sea stars or humans were here. Oh. Back then the Data Vault only had info on wildlife in Silas, which interested the Guardian as a region on the planet that inhabited by humans is very rare. Even Pony Island in Alola has residents. The Guardian used it as a hangout spot and made friends with the sea stars when they arrived. The Silas region had a special place in the Guardian's heart and so the Guardian looks over more than just the uh, data vault now. The Guardian's greatest strength is their guidance over Sealus. The Guardian does not have any fears. The Guardian's favourite type is Bug, due to a lot of them having uh, similarities with the Guardian in the mouth and eye department. <laughs> the Guardian is a big fan of Chelsea's music and has bought all of the all of her albums. Oh, that's nice. Alright. Uh, ice cream sandwich. When Ice Cream Sandwich and Chelsea get together and start making puns, they can go on for a very long time. The most uh, infamous example is when they visited the Pokemon Research Institute in Norel. One of the researchers was talking about Magnazone and a pun came to Ice Cream Sandwich's head. If Magnazone could call people, it would be Magnaphone. <laughs> Chelsea, then, Chelsea and then the researchers started making puns too. This went on for over an hour and a half. This incident is referred to as the 100 minutes of research paralysis because in those 100 minutes, no one was doing anything except making puns. Afterwards, some of the researchers wondered whether Ice Cream Sandwich and Chelsea should be allowed in the Institute at the same time. Ice Cream Sandwich's uh, greatest strength is her ability to combine words together to make puns. Her biggest fear is having plans interrupted and not being able to contact people to tell them about it. If Ice Cream Sandwich could use ice type attacks, she'd be an Ice Beam Sandwich. <laughs> oh man. Okay, who else should we go for? Um, right, let's go down a teeny bit. I think we'll do Delicia and Pandora and Emily. All right, let's do Delicia. Delicia is four years younger than Felicia. She's always been a big eater, but she's never been a picky eater. Although desserts are by far her favorite, she's willing to try almost anything. She's no less picky with beverages than she is with food. Milkshakes are her favorite. She met her first Pokemon, Lickitung, during a pie eating contest. It was a wild Lickitung that smelled the nearby pies and decided to participate. The final two contestants remaining were Delicia and Lickitung, and Delicia won. Shocked at this, the Lickitung decided to tag along with Delicia. It knew that with Delicia, it would have plenty of opportunities to eat delicious food. Delicia's biggest strength is her appetite, which can come in handy in unexpected places, like when she ate a pillar block in the underwater hotel's elevator. <laughs> oh yeah. Her biggest fear is having to eat vegetables. Oh man, I love vegetables though. The only food group she tends to shy away from. Final fact, um, although she loves eating, she doesn't know much about cooking. She usually doesn't make her own meals. Now, if you guys like hate vegetables, like I cannot recommend enough. Try cauliflower with cheese. It's just like cheese on like cheesy cauliflower is just oh, so good. I had some last night. I want some more to be honest. <laughs> Fox and Emily both attended school in their home region, but it wasn't a trainer school. While their parents had no problems with them becoming trainers if they wanted, they thought learning about the world in general first was best. Emily was more outgoing, the more, more outgoing one. She participated in some school events and also helped advertise them. They had their Pokemon since they were little and have always taken good care of them. 
Since they spent so much time with their Pokemon and watched plenty of battles growing up, it didn't take long for them to get, a lo get the hang of being a trainer. If Voltsy had lost before making it to Anne, it's very possible Emily would have been Celis' third champion. Emily's biggest strength is being willing to stand and speak up for the others when they need help. Her biggest fear is getting into a major argument with family. Uh, fun fact, uh, Emily likes to have a variety of types on her team, but if she had to choose a, fa a favourite type, it would be normal. Fair enough. And then lastly, Pandora. It's all about style and fashion. She loves anything that glows, shines or sparkles, especially if it's purple or blue. When she was little, Pandora received an egg from her parents as a birthday gift. This egg was from their own Pokemon, and hatched into a shiny Rolts. Everyone was surprised. Pandora had never seen a shiny Pokemon before then, and didn't know they existed. She was worried that the Rolts had a cold. Her parents reassured her that it was fine, Aww. and explained that, um, what, what, what shiny Pokemon are. Pandora and Rolts became friends quickly, and Pandora had her wardrobe match Rolts' uh, coloration. Her most well-known outfit was designed by Wendy, who Pandora commissioned to make it. Today, Pandora is the most famous model in Cialis, and also has her own perfume brand. Her Pokemon have appeared with her in many of her photo shoots, and they're just as dazzling as she is. Pandora's greatest strengths are her fashion sense and gentle personality, which complement each other well. Her biggest fear is her clothes getting dirty. <laughs> Final fun fact, Team Portal's uniforms are designed by Pandora herself, using her knowledge of fashion design from uh, watching Wendy work. That's pretty sweet, man. Right, and the last two are... Um, top left is trivia that doesn't fit into any specific category. Top right can info on how the universe works. And the managers for the top. Okay. Legendary Pokemon in sport usually have similar lore to the official games, with the main difference being Arceus, Giratina, and Eveltal. Arceus didn't create the universe, no one knows when or how the universe came about. Giratina wasn't banished to the distortion world, but lives there and watches over it. Oblivion Wing aside, Eveltal doesn't hurt others to keep itself functioning. Okay. The concept of evil doesn't exist. There are people whose ends don't justify their means, but all have a reason for doing what they do. Some of them think they're helping others and trying to get by, and may don't see another way of doing what they think they have to do. But no one would intentionally go out of their way to make life more difficult for others just for fun. And no one is this way forever. Everyone eventually learns why what they did was wrong. A person as cruel as Getsis wouldn't exist here, so in Spork's universe, he's not anywhere close to how he was in the official series. Yeah, Getsis was super evil, man. Like, to me, I think the best villains are Giovanni, and gets this like if you play ultra sun ultra moon in the rainbow rocket you know bit gets this literally like threatens to kill like lily and then in black and white too he he lit if n doesn't come in the second like soon like later sorry you're dead gets this almost kills you like that's crazy to think like oh man gets this is so cool never taken pokedex entry seriously not with claims like makago being ten thousand times hotter than the sun oh yeah that's a bit dumb but some Pokédex entries mention ghost types as being the spirits of deceased Pokémon or even people. Whether or not this is true, definitely isn't true in Spork. Ghosts are instead their own classification of beings with their own sets of spooky abilities, like how birds can fly. Could Gina be one of them? Whether she is or not, she isn't the spirit of a dead person since death doesn't exist. Sweet. Babies aren't uh, carried in the stomach, they're formed through tubes instead. These tubes are only visible to the parents and aren't inside of part of the body. I'm not sure if two people are needed for this to happen, or if wanting a child and being able to handle the responsibility are enough. I decided to go with the latter for Spork, Krillia's only parent is Illumia. While Krillia is the only character known to have one parent, I don't imagine it's uncommon, or that one parent has more difficulty than two in raising kids. Pokemon still lay eggs because that's a major part of the breeding mechanic, I wouldn't know if only humans have the tubes or if Pokemon do too. Man, like, the, the data vault is such a cool idea, like, I wish we get like sort of like more of this in other fan games, just like knowing the lore and just seeing you know character development. Ever it's just so sweet, man. Like backstories, every oh man, love this game. Carol was mentioned to have stopped aging at eight, and Peach's data vault character file mentions that he stopped aging at nine. People don't age forever; they stop when they reach the age that corresponds with their emotional strength. Even the oldest, toughest people stop aging at a certain point. They don't get wrinkles, and their bodies don't become weaker. Emotional strength refers to how much difficulty a person is able to handle emotionally. No one will be given more than they're capable of handling. To someone like Carol, the extent of what she'd be able to handle is having to eat food that she dislikes. A much older person may be able to handle having their homes destroyed in a storm and needing to rebuild from scratch. 
No one ever has to deal with extremely dark subjects like torture or losing a body part, which uh, don't don't and can't happen. Okay. Death doesn't exist, which means that some events from the official games happen differently in Spork's universe. For example, the Marowak at Pokemon Tower. Instead of it being the ghost of a Marowak that Team Rocket killed, it was an Alola Marowak that got separated from his child. Oh, that's cool. Because of that, um, and being it being an, an unfamiliar environment, it was difficult to calm down. After Team Rocket was cleared from the tower, it did reunite with its child. Pokemon Tower also isn't a graveyard and was instead always the radio tower that it is in Gold, Silver, Crystal and Heart Gold, Soul, Silver. Just thinking, with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, we've got to go to Lavender Town and you're going to have the whole Sylph Scope thing. It'll be so cool if the ghost isn't, they make it a Lola Marowak. I think that'd be so cool. Like, because obviously it's the ghost of a Marowak. Oh man, I really hope Let's Go Pikachu Eevee do that. Make... The ghost Alola, that would be such a cool idea dude, oh wow. Graveyards in other regions similarly either don't exist or serve a different purpose. Okay. Oh man, I really hope Let's Go Pikachu Eevee do that. And this was um, trivia, wasn't it? You've been flocked. One day a nearby ha house's lawn was covered with plastic flamingos and a sign that said, you've been flocked. That's the inspiration for that part of Carol's gym. Carol's gym was originally going to have a make a doll quiz like Hoenn's Trick House. Ended up deciding that between the trainer school and C Star school, there were already a lot of quizzes, so I should probably do something else. Okay, the third dream sequence in the Dark Dungeon is based on a silly story I wrote two years ago. In the story, I was making coffee for someone in an elevator who had a koala, but he left because he forgot something in his car, which was on Neptune. I asked the koala what I should do with uh, the coffee now, and he said, just splash it on somebody, I guess, and vanished. Went to the hotel lobby, and someone told me there were freshly baked peanut butter brownies in the kitchen, so I went there and ate some. After that, I went outside and fell asleep in the snow, realizing, as I was doing so, that I no longer had the coffee. Woke up in a stadium where a rock, paper, scissors tournament was happening. I got up to the third last round, but my opponent went a second after me. The koala, coffee cup, and their animal friends called out my opponent for cheating, and the coffee cup went around with the cheater and won. I was put back in, put back in and made it to the finals, where it was me versus the coffee cup. Do you think you'd be sent home because of some pathetic fraud? I'm your real final opponent. We kept picking the same thing, and this went on for 10 hours. Gusts of winds were blowing from the intensity of our match. By the end of it, we were on platforms raised up by tornadoes. We passed out from exhaustion. The koala said we both did good. The scene changed to us all eating waffles and would have many more adventures together. <laughs> in Ice Cream Sandwich's bedroom in the Crystal Castle, there's a dream journal that goes into detail about a dream she had. This dream is also referenced in Litwick's Data Vault character file. This dream I actually had, the only part that was edited for Spork is Elephant being changed to Donphan and Cow being changed to Miltank. Person that looked like a human chandelier also looked like that in the dream. That's my favourite dream light that I remember having. Oh, sweet. In X and Y, there's an NPC in Parfume Palace who tells you about Hooper if you have it in your party. It says that an organization once tried to manipulate Hooper's power, but objects that belonged to them suddenly began to disappear. They got scared and hit in their headquarters. Eventually the disappearances uh, stopped, so they went outside. When they went out, they were in the middle of a desert. The dialogue from that event NPC is what Team Portal is based on, but Team Portal isn't intended to be the group mentioned. That happened in the past, while Team Portal was operating in the present. That organization is treated as non-canon and spork because if it did happen, Team Portal would have been repeating another group's mistake. Fair enough, and then we've got Sealess Last. The Sea Stars uh, come from a short story I wrote in 2011 called Sea Star Society. Peach and Ivan were the characters in this story, but their roles in the short story and in spork are different. In the story, Peach and Ivan were just friends from school, didn't have any position of, of authority in the society. Celian Park also existed in the story. Sealess and the Soap Room weren't written about, uh, but they were ideas in my head. Never gave a name to the Sea Stars that inspired Sealess, though, and Sealess is just an arrangement of letters that I thought up thought looked nice. Mida is only in Spork and wasn't in the story. In the earlier stages of planning, I hadn't thought, of, thought to include the Sea Stars yet. I wanted to make the Psychic Type Elite Four member an extraterrestrial, and expanding on this is what led me to add the Sea Stars to the game. Oh, that's cool. Right, the manager. Who is the manager? Oh, wait, marble first. And what's this? Another universe fragment. Yeah, what do these universe fragments do? Because we got 
free now? Yeah, we've got free. Hi, welcome to the Data Vault. My name's Arceus, I'm the manager here. I'm in charge of making sure all, all info is in the proper section and up to date. Litwick helps me out with that too. Okay. So Arceus is the manager, so... What do we do now? Do we leave? Um, I'm ready to go. Alright, but while we're still here, I have a quest. I was wondering if you'd battle with me. Oh, about the Guardian? Couldn't expect me to see all those amazing battles you have and not want to battle you myself. The Champion of Sealess versus the Guardian of Sealess. Let's see which one of us is stronger. Okay. Oh, this background looks sweet. Okay. Right, um... Let's go for a sword stance. And we'll go for a... Oh, I should go for Iron Head. Oops. My bad. It's fine. Alright, let's see. Rabombi? Yeah, we're staying. Go for an Iron Head. Alright, we should have another Psychic. And Iron Head can finish you off. So far, so good. The net. Um, I'm gonna stay in. Just go for a multi attack. Oh, it's Mega Banette. I do love Mega Banette. I think its design looks really cool. Oh, critical hit! Ah, oh, sucks to be you, man. Pavilion, yeah, we'll stay in. Just go for a multi attack. Nice. Uh, Boswell, yeah, we'll just stay in. Multi attack. Oh, Boswell. Oh, we live with a little teeny bit of HP. Oh, nice. So Valley, man. So Valley is my guy. Just too good. Oh, last Pokemon. Oh, a shiny Shuckle. Shuckle is rock and oh, great. Flinch. Toxic. Oh, come on. Live one poison. Oh, yes. You just got swept by my so Valley. Oh, let's go. That was the most incredible battle I've had since I battled Sealus. For me, it was alright. It was alright. <laughs> Wonder how much more you'll be able to accomplish with that kind of battling. I think everyone else is ready too. So let's head to the Sea Star Shrine. So you got Sealus's speech, haven't we? It's Sealus! Sealus is back! Sure it's been a while, hasn't it? I know a lot happened while I was away. Most notably, the vacant champion position was filled twice. Since it's been so long, some of you might have only heard stories about me. But I'm the real Sealus. And I'm finally back. Sorry for being away for all that time. I wasn't supposed to say anything about where I was going, but I'll tell you all about that adventure sometime soon. On to the important topics for this meeting. Even though I'm back for good now, Ivan will remain the representative of the Sea Star Society. I don't think it would be fair to take away something I gave gave him after coming back. I'll be his advisor though, if he needs me. I already told some of you this, but I also don't plan on reclaiming my champion ti championship title. The current champion has already defeated me anyway. Volti even beat Sealers? That's right, Volti is a great champion. The Guardian has told me some of what's been happening, but I'm sure I still have a lot of catching up to do. I've asked Ivan to fill me in later. And that about covers it. I'm looking forward to getting back into the community and I hope you've all been doing well. For now, this meeting is dismissed. Hope that speech wasn't underwhelming. It was fine, Sealers. I think more than anything, we're all happy to see you back. Definitely. I'd love to hear about uh, your adventures. So, so would I. And if you'd like to listen, I can tell you about my own journey of self-improvement sometime. It's been a long trip, and I'm sure it's been exhausting at times. You're welcome to rest at the Pokemon Center anytime. I'll take all three of you up on that, but first, there was something else I wanted to address. Boltzy, for everything you've done, I grant you permission to access the Soap Room. That reminds me, I'd also like to grant all of you permission to catch Manaphy and Fiona in Celian Park. And whenever you want to come back to the Data Vault, just let me know. I'll be waiting here. So. What are you all going to do next? We're going to the soap room, obviously. Our vacation isn't over yet. I'd like to do some training, and then I'm going to come. Then I'm going to. Uh, then I'm coming for your champion title, Volsi. I'll have to get back to work, both on my machines and my gym. And since we're up and running again, I'll be resuming progress at Area S1. Krillia, would you like to join the team? I'd love to. We need to decide what direction Team Portal should go from here on out. We won't cause any more trouble, but I don't want to disband either. I've got to set up for the battle frontier. It's about time for it to open. Shouldn't you be coming too, Brutus? That's right, I completely forgot. Brutus is a frontier brain? I am. 
That's what Peach uh, almost mentioned as me being recently appointed as. I'll be in charge of the battle tower. Considering all you guys have, um, considering all you guys have done, I guess it's okay for you to know that. Other than us and Rainier, Natalie will have the battle cloud and Kayla will have the battle VR. Ice cream Sunday. <laughs> we'll get ice cream Sundays while we're getting set up. <laughs> Seems like you'll still have a lot to do. Best of luck to every one of us. Congratulations, you've reached the end of the main story for Pokemon Spork. You can now search for legendaries, rematch every character, and do the battle frontier after a small quest. Okay, the notepad file was, uh, yep. Legendary side quests and rematch location in the game folder will help you find them. Oh. Alright. Well. I think I'll let the credits roll. And if we can go to the soap room, we'll go to the soap room and see what's in there. But, man, this game was really good. I really enjoyed this. Like, I thought it might be, like, a bit like Reborn Rejuvenation, because I, I heard it was going to be really difficult. And when I first did, like, I played this game before it was finished, like, a year ago, I, I did a little, like, you know, showcase of the first, like, hour or so. Had a bit of trouble with it. I was, you know, I think it's because of my starter and just getting destroyed <laughs> by trainers. But... Difficulty was pretty awesome. I feel like after getting Sil Valley, Sil Valley was a bit too OP. But man, I, lo I love using Sil Valley. It's like the first time I actually like, properly used one, and now I just want to keep using more and more because they're so good. But this game was fantastic. Like story was awesome. Like just the, the you know the region, everything was awesome. Characters are awesome. Music is awesome. Just oh man, really did enjoy this game. And it's like credits. Are done. Sweet. Is the soap room back here? I think it is. Shrine guard, okay. Oh, we got Ladias and Ladioses. Got Kyogre. I'm assuming we battle Kyogre to get him on the team. Yeah. Okay. So the soap room is just like some legendary Pokemon locations, which is still cool. Oh, you missed good. There's a variety of Pokemon you can get in this game. Really awesome. I'm so happy I can, get, I can get Zero Aura. Didn't get to use it that much because you've got the end of the game, but second favorite Pokemon. Something you can't really use and we can't really get. I mean, I assume Zero Aura is going to come out. I think I think it's out now, but if only if you saw the movie in Japan. But I, I feel like the movie is going to come out in the UK. November-ish, that's when um, I Choose You came out. So once that gets you know announced, I'm definitely going to see that in cinema and hopefully I get... I'm hoping we get like another TCG card, because when I saw I Choose You, I got like a really cool Ash Pikachu, or Ash Hat Pikachu card. Which um, is part of my collection, I've got every single Ash Hat Pikachu trading card, which... Oh man, so hard to get because the only thing is... Uh, ah, this is a long story, it doesn't really matter, but I really hope we get like a Zero Aura card, but if you get Zero Aura in-game then that's just as good. Just as good. Uh, anyway, I have really enjoyed Spork. I'm not going to do the Battle Frontier because people might hate me for this, but I, I really hate the Battle Frontier. Like, everyone loved it in Emerald. I was like, don't like it. Didn't do it in um, Diamond Pearl Platinum. And when Oraz, you know, didn't have the Battle Frontier, I, was, I didn't care. I was like, cool, don't care, don't like it anyway. So, I don't know. Something about the Battle Frontier i just never been a fan of. But, um... Yeah, like the main story for this was fantastic. I really, really did enjoy it, and hopefully, you guys enjoy this as well. We got, I've got many, many other things planned. Um, we'll be doing, but yeah, this game up there were one of the best ones, man. I love this game, so good, so good. But thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Peace.